light bulb went off. Okay, the question has been asked by a couple of people in the audience that can we really continue to fast and solve the menopausal weight gain issue? If you are over 40 or over 50, it is not impossible to lose the weight during the change. I promise you, let's get into it. That I want to share about intermittent fasting, what I've been doing lately, and how it might help you as well. And if you have been watching my channel for the last, say, two months or so, I had kind of backed away a little bit from extended fasting. Although I have done ADF for a couple of weeks, about three to four weeks. And if you're not familiar with ADF, that's alternate day fasting. So I would eat one day and then the next day I would fast and then the following day I eat again, repeat the cycle, right? I've had some successes at the beginning and then it, it kind of changed and kind of went against the grain. Ugh. So what is it that is driving me crazy? So I have tested for my hormones and which is known as the Dutch test. I have not received it back yet, but as soon as I get the results, I will share that with you all. And that is a real intensive uh, deep dive into your hormones and seeing what the heck is going on. And I think I know, okay, I do know that I'm menopausal and I am going through that transition. Estrogen issues, you know, progesterone, low testosterone. <laughs> but let's talk about cortisol levels. And I know I touch on it. I don't get into it that deep because I am not a doctor. I am a certified holistic nutritionist, but that is all. I'm just about serving food as medicine to the best of our ability of using it to help us lose weight and just to be healthy in general. Kind of like the no diet diet method, you know? It's okay as long as you get a balance with your macros. And one thing I found out about getting older is that I need to lead with more protein in my diet. I've also found that the high carbs that I was eating in my plant-based diet, it really was ticking up more of the cholesterol, uh, just more things that my body just requires me to do versus doing too much of one thing. I think you know what I mean. Everyone is unique and you have to customize the meal plan that fits you. Okay, with all that said, what is it that can backfire in intermittent fasting? The number one thing is cortisol levels. If they are too high, then all we're doing is burning out our adrenals. And when you burn out your, and have adrenal fatigue, then um, you might be that person that you are great first thing in the morning and then you burn out and you're ready to take a nap, say by one o'clock in the afternoon. Or you just can't think clearly. You have brain fog because you might be that person that is in your sleep. You could fall asleep, no problem, right? Because you're exhausted but you can't really stay asleep and your mind is just ripping, right? Going around and around and around and thinking about maybe one or two things and just obsessing over something that you need to do at work or whatever the case. That means you know, you're in high stress type of lifestyle. So those cortisol levels are just peaking way too soon. Usually you peak in your cortisol levels in the mornings, uh, say 7 a.m., somewhere around there, 6 a.m. But if you have burned out your adrenals, cortisol levels could be high all the time. So if you're intermittent fasting and you're trying to extend the fast, then you're just giving yourself more higher cortisol levels, right? But you can balance that out so you can still intermittent fast. The thing about it, there are a couple of things that we can talk about, but as you know, that I touched on just now is that sleep. Number one problem. If you're not getting good quality sleep, then you're not gonna be able to fast in a way that will bring down the cortisol levels that is surrounding around the actual intermittent fasting time frame. Because we know intermittent fasting, the longer you go, yes, your cortisol levels start to rise. 
but it's not a bad thing if you have good rest and good enough energy all ready to do the actual fast. That means you prepped for it properly. The other thing is breaking the fast. Are you breaking the fast with like high carb foods? That would be a no bueno. That's not a good thing. You really need to break your fast with protein and lead with that. Whether it be beans, whether it be salmon or eggs or something like that, that's a better way to go because a non-inflammatory type of food that is considered higher protein will ease you into breaking the fast without spiking up those cortisol levels even more. Because as long as you have those high cortisol levels, then it's just going into fat storage. So instead of converting into energy, right? So you can lose those extra pounds. It's just converting to more fat storage and hanging on to it. So the food you put in your body is just going right on top of the fat storage you already have. So you're just adding, adding, adding to the fat. And hence, us ladies and going through the change and the hormonal fluctuations, it's just going around your belly, right? Like a tire. And that that can be dangerous too because that's what we call visceral fat. The other thing is you wanna cut down the caffeine. And what I do know about fasting is that if you're not getting enough electrolytes, like your sodium, putting some salt in your water or something, if you're doing extended fasting, then that's another depletion of your adrenals. You need to give yourself electrolytes while you're doing the fast as well as when you're not fasting. There's other ways if you're not a person that just wants to put a lot of salt in your water, uh, you can squeeze some lemon in there. Uh, you can even do apple cider vinegar, splash of that with the mother into your water. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. You can also use cinnamon. Cinnamon is a great way to add to your water. It's, it's a great way of keeping those electric lights up. So many things, so many things to think of. So, so there's been a lot of studies that have looked at shorter fasts versus longer fasts. And so shorter fasts have been shown that they don't affect the cortisol levels, like increasing it as much as you would do in an extended fast. So if you're doing a fast like say 18-6, so six hours you have an eating window and 18 hours of fasting, that's okay. It seems to be pretty good. I mean, yes, you're spiking up your cortisol a little bit, but not to the point where you're doing damage to yourself. You just wanna make sure that you're doing all those things that we discussed, getting the good sleep, getting the electrolytes in your system, eating the right foods when it's time to break the fast, right? And not overdoing it with extra caffeine. Maybe you need to switch out the coffee for tea and maybe a non-caffeine type of herbal tea. Other kind of swap out foods that you can do instead of spicy food, you can do non-spicy food that is considered non-inflammatory. You know, you can eat things like sweet potatoes. You can eat some nuts every now and then. Bottom line, we have to really, really work on the hormones so we can attack it in the right mode and that we can kick the menopausal issues in the tail and keep going. I hope this helped a little bit, just a couple of tips, but just remember to take care of yourself and find that balance and always keep searching for that perfect bite and balance. We'll talk to you on the next one. Cheers.